Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're hover fishing for Fall Run Chinook Salmon at Drano Lake, which is part of the Columbia River. And the fishing's red hot. Now, if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. 2020 has been a difficult year at best, but one bright spot has been the unexpectedly large return of Fall Run Chinook Salmon to the Columbia River. 748, not bad Jason, if I get this in. The fishing's so good that even I can catch one, and this fish will fill our limits for the boat before eight in the morning. All right. that's, that's a wrap, I guess we say. Yeah. <laughs> Those are great quality fish for myself, Jason Hambly, Steve Lynch, Marcus Weiner, and George Crum who all got to Drano extremely early in the morning. We're targeting Chinook salmon with a technique called hover fishing, which is simply presenting a bait of eggs with a piece of sand shrimp straight down in the fish milling around Drano Lake. These are Columbia River fish, but the unique geography of Drano gives us the opportunity to fish for them in a calm lake, so to speak. But this morning, the wind is blowing, which will make crucial boat control difficult. Drano holds steelhead and coho as well, but those marks on the graph give us hope for fast limits of Chinook salmon. We got here really early today and more or less that was just to kind of avoid battling the boat ramp and it's lined up a little bit but it's not terrible. But we're going to uh, just kind of hang out until it gets light and then we've got a couple little holes here we're going to fish and see what we can materialize. Our, our plan is to get here early to hold the spot and then we need it light enough so we can see the angle of our line. We pretty much want it straight up and down. So if it's too dark, we just really can't see the lines and we'll be all over the place. So by another 10 minutes, we'll be fishing. Well, we're starting to get a little bit of light out here, so I think we're going to go ahead and get them dropped down. You guys uh, just go ahead and drop down, come up two to three cranks, and uh, I'll try to hold here the best I can with this wind. Like a decent one? Good and early still. I ideally like it when the sun comes over the hillside there. It seems like that's when the bite picks up, but we stuck one a little bit early. Jumper. This could be an early morning bite and it just dies right off. So you catch them, you kill them. Yes. Unless they're too deep, and throw them back. They call that a good start. It's important to keep your gear clean, but I haven't quite mastered that art yet. It gives it character.
Welcome back to Drano Lake. I'm Justin Wolf. We're targeting Chinook salmon with Jason Hambly along with Steve Lynch of Procure and Marcus Weiner and George Crum of Fish Alaska Magazine. We got an early start and it didn't take Jason more than a minute or two to hook up our first fish using roe and sand shrimp. So what we're running is the uh, Procure Fuse Egg Cure. Got a gob of them here with a little piece of sand trim. And then we're gonna put a little more sulfite on just up here, make them a little hotter. Just a little bit, right? And then just a tab of the Anna's Buddy tuna. In the morning, sweet. Thank you, Lord. May you please have some more. Uh, a lot of guys up here will run a little bit hotter here just because of the fact that we're a little ways from salt water and uh, they're craving salts and chemicals and it seems like it, it's a productive way to go. So that's why we're running that. The further upstream you go, the hotter the uh, egg you want. Uh, so the, the closer to tide water you go sweeter, the further upstream you go hotter. And sodium sulfite just makes it a hotter egg, makes it milk a little faster, so it puts out one heck of a smoke trail. The whole trick to the hover fishing deal is boat control, especially on days today, like today when you got a ton of wind. It's just line angles or everything. If you got extreme pitches in your line, you're, it means your bait's not on the bottom, it's not where the fish live. So biggest thing is just always be on the motor and always be pointing in the right direction and keeping that keeping your baits fishing. So ideally you want to stand up and point your rod at the water. That way when you get bit, it's easy to set the hook. And a lot of times these fish will just feel like a trout. It's just a light tap, tap, tap. And try to on that second or third tap to set the hook. Very seldom will they just come up and slam it hard. Oh, coming down. Oh. Me too. Warm up's over. <laughs> Drop it down, let it hit the bottom, bring it up two or three turns. It'd be anywhere from a foot to maybe three feet off the bottom, depending on how, how, far, how many real turns you bring it up. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Bait Robin, little. Running a three out Gamagatsu. If I keep losing these fish, I might have to go with a four out. One nice thing about this fishery up here at Drana Lake is there's a lot of different options and uh, main, mostly uh, trolling and hover fishing are, are two utilized a lot in the fall. And over here, Chris Turvey, he's a guide here that spends a lot of time in these waters. He's trolling and as you can see, he's got onto one there, so it obviously works. <laughs> Young the boys going towards George. Ah, he's coming back around. Now he's going back. Now he's going over this way. Now he's going up this way. Clearly he's in control. He saw you, Marcus. Well, I know. You scared him. Yeah. Yes, sir. You That's or right. me. One of us scared him. <laughs> that, ooh. Big. You fish. Woohoo! Well done. So just like most uh, salmon or steelhead on the uh, 
hatchery fish, they clip the adipose on them, and on the wild fish, they have a full adipose. As you can see on this one, it, it was a hatchery raised fish, and it's got the adipose missing. They both fight just as good, they both eat just as good. The only difference is, is we can, with clear conscience, bonk these. That's why it's important to have a good net. I tell you what, nothing worse than going to scoop them up and have them go right through the net. The net's all rotted. The handle bends. With these Beckmans, they're a top-notch net. The nice thing is on these, these have the treated bag, so it helps keep the hooks from getting embedded into the, the fibers and hard to get out. They just come right out. It makes it a lot easier to work with them. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this week's episode where we're at Drano Lake, part of the Columbia River just above Bonneville Dam, hover fishing for fall run Chinook salmon, and we're on top of a pile of fish. We're gonna have our limit before breakfast. Now, what could be better than that? Now, we're hover fishing, which means we're dropping our bait of eggs straight down. It couldn't be more simple. A weight, your bait, and a hook. Now, the, the whole trick is, and what, and what Jason was talking about in the episode, is boat control and keeping that line straight up and down. If you're not doing that, you're just not gonna catch as many fish. And that's very tough to do in any conditions, but especially in a day like this when it's so windy. Now, we're gonna go back to Drano Lake and finish off our limits, but first, I wanna show you a few things that might help you modify your hooks a little bit to be more successful. Now, what we're using today are three Gamagatsu hooks, and uh, Jason would say, well, if I keep missing my fish, I'm gonna move to a four-aught. Yeah, I don't know, but four-aught's pretty big. I've never seen Jason use a four-aught, but, and in fact, a three-aught, like these right here, have, uh, I've never used a three-aught. I mean, to me, that's giant. You know, I'm from California where we use like two, number two hooks, not two-aught, but number two sometimes, you know, in the low, clear water. So here's a, a Brad's three-aught hook. And what's great about this setup here is that these are leaders already all tied up, ready to fish. So if you don't know how to tie an egg loop or you just would rather have somebody else tie them for you, well, here you go. And these, these are kind of cool. They've got, um, they've got the Brad's hooks and then also tied on CXX, P-Line CXX line, which is super strong, super high quality line. So this is a good deal. So let me just peel one of these off of here. Now you can make all the modifications you want to hooks, um, but if you don't have a good way to store your hooks, then or your leaders, then it's just gonna be a mess. So that's why these uh, leader boards are, are just great. This is a fishing leader board, but you have to have something to keep your hooks organized and, and neat. So here we go, just a three-aught hook tied with a bait loop with about 42 inches a leader. This is ready to go. You could catch a fish just like this. But I'm gonna show you a couple things that you might play with, might, might meet your needs, or it might not. So the idea here is that you're going to push up on the line Grab that line there and create a loop that you can put your bait in, your sand shrimp or your uh, eggs or whatever. There's lots of uses for that, but that's called a bait loop. All you're doing is, is pushing that up. Now, for people who are new to this or have problems with their dexterity or just the issues with this sort of thing, pushing that line up like that and, and or grabbing that line to, to work with. I found over the years from fishing with people, it's, it's difficult for them. So back when I was fishing a lot of people on my boat, I, I would put, and I still do, I would put a little bead in there. So I just pull the line, I pulled the line out, and I've got a five millimeter flame colored, red colored bead here. Slip that on there. It's gonna go right down there and just sit right on top of the hook like that. And then I'm gonna, you wanna hold it so it doesn't fall down and get all twisted up. Then I'm just gonna slip this through the eye of the hook again and just put my hook back together. There we go. There's an egg loop with a bead in it that's very easy to grab and, and the fish that way. Now also, that bead is gonna add a little bit of color, and there's nothing wrong with that. So when you're, especially if you're, if you're back bouncing and not hover fishing, 
you know, if you're hover fishing, you want to change your bait all the time, keep good fresh bait on there. And when you're back bouncing or drifting, that, that's a little bit different story. Sometimes you're going to catch fish with hardly baited, uh, any bait on your hook at all. But that little bit of color there from the bead, plus the skein that's left on there, a little bit of egg, that's a really good presentation. So that's a good way to go. Now another thing you might want to do is take a pair of pliers and just tweak this out just a touch. Just going to make that, there we go, I'm just going to bent out that, that point of the hook just a little bit to make a little wider gap right there. That's going to help you get a little better bite. Now of course nets are critical and every fisherman wants a great net. And what I stock here in the Angler West store are the Beckman nets and they, they really do a good job. Okay, you don't want one that's going to break, right? So the Beckman nets are strong. If you use them correctly, you're not going to break them. And they also have, in this particular model, and there's, there's different types of netting, but on this particular model, this coated uh, netting is just awesome because it doesn't let your hooks get buried into the fabric of the netting. And so I love these nets. So now we've got two styles here. This one is more for, say, up tributaries of the Columbia River, smaller rivers, steelhead, and but they're also big enough for salmon. And then this style here is a little bit more maybe for saltwater buoy tan. We've got them here in the store. If you never want to stop by Woodland Washington and check us out at the Angler West store, we'd love to see you. Now, don't go away. When we come back, we're going back to Drano Lake to finish out our limit. We're on Drano Lake, an offshoot of the Columbia River, not too far up the river above Bonneville Dam, on the Washington side. We've got two fish in the box, and the time for the good fishing is just about to start. Usually this is about the time it really lights up, and we've already hooked, I don't know, three or four and got two in the box, so we only got three more to go, so we gotta, we're gonna have to make this quick. <laughs> So we're using a, a piece of salmon egg and then just a small piece of sand shrimp. And the sand shrimp is really important. I tell you what, the guys not using them aren't getting a third of the bites. I, I tell you, it's just that little added extra scent. And if you can't find sand shrimp, our sand shrimp super gel works perfect. Glad well, they're not breaking because the other day when they were breaking, it sounded like nails on a chalkboard for a good 30 seconds. These guys over here are fishing under a bobber. Got a bow and a stern anchor out to stop that drift boat from swinging around. But they've got probably eggs and sand shrimp under a bobber. Fish on. Uh, I think it's a little bigger than a jack. <laughs> oh, listen to it scream. Good sound. I like it when they pull line because it usually sometimes means it's an upriver bright. Upriver bright are fish that are generally going above Bonneville Dam, sometimes quite a way, sometimes clear up into Idaho or the Upper Columbia for sure. They're generally a higher quality fish as far as eating cons is concerned because they have a much higher fat content than lower river fish. Well, it's not going that way towards these anchor lines. Wow, come on back. It's acting weird, isn't it? I guess time to go to breakfast. <laughs> Two more, we need to go home. Last guy to catch a fish by him breakfast.
Marcus. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. I'm ready. It's my turn. Under the boat. Under the boat, my rod's out. Follow it if you need to. Hey George. Yeah. Where you going? How's it going? Welcome aboard. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.